Sometimes it's hard to tell if a thrift flip, dump find, or projects in general are going to come out the way that I envision. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I have trouble with different things and I have to redirect myself in a different way. Welcome, I'm Shelly from Repurpose My Way. Let's get started. We're gonna start out with this bread box that I got from Goodwill recently. It is a really pretty design on the front. I actually don't mind it at all, except for the fact that it is very dirty. It's been in a kitchen. Uh, and you know how kitchens get with splatters and and uh, kitchen fur, I guess you'd call it. Uh, just nastiness that comes from being in the kitchen. And I tried cleaning it and I just was not happy with what it looked like. So... I thought that it needed a good paint job and a cleanup. So I, I did try and clean it all up, didn't come clean. So we're gonna go ahead and redo this. Now, I thought I would do a little shortcut. I took off the stenciling, uh, lettering and things on the front. That came off pretty easy. This yellow flowered paper on it is some kind of like contact sticky paper and it was on there really good, like really good. There was no edges coming up or anything like that. Uh, and so I thought, well, I will just paint over it and take a little shortcut. Nobody will know the difference and no big deal. Well, so I started out with my clay paint and I painted the uh, two coats on that so that I would have a nice base. What I wanted to do with this is to uh, add the black paint and then I wanted to crackle a lighter color over the top of it. I thought it would look really cool with the black paint coming through. While the front was drying, I went over the top with the black paint while I had my brush out just to freshen up that black paint. I also took the knob off and it looked like it didn't get fully painted whoever painted it last time because it looked like somebody tried to do a makeover on this before. It didn't come like this. So I gave that a nice uh, full coat of black paint. I then got out my Latte Dixie Belle paint and just went around the light colors all over the box. So I started in the front and while I was doing that, I realized that there were some hole, screw holes in the sides. So I went ahead and tightened up those screws to make sure everything was nice and tight. And then I grabbed my clay and put those that in the holes to fill in the holes. So when I painted the sides, that would be all nice and filled in and you wouldn't see those holes. So then once that was done, letting those that little that clay dry in the holes, I grabbed uh, my Elmer's glue, just regular school glue, and put a nice coat of glue over the top of that. And now I'm going to take my latte paint and go over the top of the glue. Now once you do that and you let it sit or you use a heat gun like I'm going to do here because I love to see the process, how it happens, it will start to crackle. Uh, and I, so I just figured I'd show you this part so that you could see what happened You when you use the Elmer's glue. I have used Mod Podge before, and but I have better luck with the Elmer's glue. I don't know what it is. I just have better luck with it. So this the bottle that I was using is old like really old, years old, and it still worked after I shook it up and just made sure that it was all um, together and not separated or anything like that. So I really enjoy using the school glue a lot better than the Mod Podge for some reason. Once everything was dry, I took a very light sandpaper and just went over it to sand down some of my paint. It was really thick and I wanted to just smooth it out a little bit and also go over the uh, where I crackled it and just give it a little more distressing if possible. Not a lot, like I said, it's a very light grit paper, so it's not gonna do a lot but take off just the, the tops of uh, any of the uneven spots. 
I pulled out my La Campaign, I believe it's called, IOD Stamps. This is the large rooster, and I wanted to put him on the front over the top of the crackle paint that I had. Uh, and when you do this, there typically mm, isn't a lot of room for mistake here. Uh, I mean, you can get it off. The problem was I was using this stamp pad which, I don't, I don't know, just didn't make it very fun to try and get the paint off. Um, and so once I did this, I didn't really like how the rooster was positioned. He looked like he was leaning forward. Uh, I just, I didn't get it on there the way I liked. And I thought, no, we'll just keep going with it. Trust the process, right? Everybody says trust the process. Yeah, I was not trusting it very well <laughs> through this whole thing and eventually I just scrapped it and this is what I did. So I sanded and scraped because I was not happy with it and I wanted to get this back down to uh, the black as much as that I, as much as I could so that I could start over and do something different and as I'm scraping and sanding I realized the paper is starting to tear that was underneath. So I decided, well, what the heck, I'm going to just go with it and tear it off and look what was underneath. This is what was covered with the flower like contact paper. So it was a like a primitive front, which of course is fine with me. Uh, it didn't look that bad. It actually was very well preserved. It looked really good. So I decided that I was going to work at it and get all the paper off it. Any paint that was left on it, which I really didn't get much on there. Uh, and I was quite surprised at what it looked like. And I thought I should have just done this in the first place. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, it's one of those things. So I just painted around the door black, uh, just around the picture part. I thought that would make that pop a little bit better. And I wanted to show you that not everything comes out the way that I always envision. I know sometimes when you watch videos, it looks like, you know, everything comes off without a hitch and it doesn't always. There's, there are things that happen and you just got to kind of go with it and know that it's just paint. It's nothing that... Um, can't be fixed. So it was uh, uh, just a silly thing that I should have done. I should have taken that paper off or tried a little bit harder and I could have s just skipped all that other the other steps that I did. But I didn't. I learned from this experience and hopefully you got a little something from this. And uh, here are the finished pictures of it. So this stool was in my stash. I was digging around for something and I ended up knocking it over and I was like, why haven't I finished this? I think it had a Christmas or winter scene on the top of it maybe and it was a little scuffed up so I just took my sander and went over it and finished up sanding it. So it got set aside and never finished. So I thought today I would work on it and get it done and in my booth so that I don't have to uh, trip on it anymore or knock it over anymore. So I uh, just get some projects done around here. They're stacking up like crazy. So I um, just took some of my Dixie Belle latte paint. It was already out and uh, my paintbrush was already wet. So I just said, I'm going to go for it. And I did two coats uh, up underneath and on the top. And that covers so well. I really like this Dixie Belle paint. And I like this color too. It's a really nice cream color. So uh, it's it covers very well. I got out my little scrapbook papers that I recently got from the scrapbook shop. 
These are beautiful little lace edged papers that you can use in mixed media. You can use whatever you want. I am going to use these mostly in my DIYs. My last video that I did, I used it in a mixed media picture frame with a wood crow and all different kinds of things. But I, they're just beautiful papers and I wanted to use them again. And I thought the color of the stool and the colors in the paper uh, just made a really nice combination. They, the, they just complemented each other. So I'm going to have a link down in the description for these papers. I'll have a link to the scrapbook shop and a discount code if you want to check it out. Shop around. Their prices are really good. They've got some stamps. They've got stamp pads. They've got all kinds of stuff. So make sure you check out their website. Uh, lots of different things and just think outside of the box when using it for your DIYs. If you don't do scrapbooking or journaling, um, you can use these in your DIYs. So I'm taking some Mod Podge, putting it on the back of one of the papers that I decided to use. And I'm going to lay this on the stool kind of sideways, almost like somebody kind of just dropped it on there and left it and uh, just you know just set it on there and it's and, and it's there so I thought it would look kind of dainty and sweet and uh, just a cute little stool to have like a little riser for you know some candles or some little birds to put on there or whatever you decided to use now I have these rub-ons from these are from Dollar Tree and I pick these up when I find them every once in a while because they have little things on them that are so fun. This one had butterflies, so I thought it went well with the paper and uh, because it had flowers and butterflies on it. So I thought I would do a little bit on the front of my stool and add a butterfly on either edge, on either side there in the front. And then um, I think that's all I used out of this one. And then I have another one with words on it that I'm also going to use. And I'm going to put that on the top of the paper. So I'll show you how I do that as well. So this is the other rub-on from Dollar Tree. It has a bunch of words, sayings, and phrases on there. And I liked the enjoy every moment little phrase. So I thought I would put that on to my paper like somebody had written it on there. And I don't know. It's kind of telling a story, I guess. So um, I will just leave you with this. After I sealed the top and sides with the Mod Podge, I let that dry and now I'm going over it with a little bit of black paint around the edges to give it a little bit of a distressed look, just highlighting those edges and I think that makes the wording pop a little bit on the top as well. So I went ahead and did that and then this is all finished.
This basket was a fun find at a local flea market. It's supposed to be the largest flea market in Maine that I went to a few weeks ago. I have a video about that and I will drop the link to that video down in the description. You'll probably want to check that out. It's very cool there. So I picked this up for like, I don't know, $8. It was a good deal. These baskets go for a lot of money. And I wanted to change the color. It's it's like a, a whitewash over a darker color. And it's pretty, but not what I need, not what I want. I want a nice warm color all over on this piece. Now, as I'm painting it, I'm thinking I really love the color but I decided to add some more to it later on and uh, it makes it look more like a just a regular nice dark rich colored basket and um, I'm glad that I painted it this color this is mineral from Waverly it's a nice light light brown uh, like a, a brownish gray color it's a really beautiful color and it's warm which is what I want because I will show you what I am going to do with this thing. It is, I've been shopping Zazzle again. Okay, that's all I need to say <laughs> to some of you that have been here before. Uh, I love Zazzle and I love their decoupage papers. So I just went a little bit crazy with a few of their papers and I found one that I absolutely love and that I wanted to put in the middle of this basket. So I was kind of in the dilemma of what do I use to uh, put the paper on because I can't just put it over the basket but you will see in just a second what I use. So as you can see, I've gone over it with antique wax and wiped it back once the mineral paint was dry and I love how it came out. I just absolutely love the rich, darker color of it. So I went to Dollar General. I was going to go to Dollar Tree, but Dollar General is right there uh, next to where I was. And so I popped in there and got this, I think it's a 12 by 14, just a, a painter's easel and I decided that I wanted to use this Zazzle paper, absolutely beautiful, uh, on that so that I could put that, just hook it to the front of my basket. I thought that would look beautiful. The colors in it are warm and are gonna go perfectly with my newly painted basket. So I decoupage that on there. So I'm just brushing it on in sections and then I smooth it down. Now this paper is super thin, so I'm using a baggie on my hand to get out the wrinkles, and this worked really, really well. I don't absolutely have to get all the wrinkles out. I'm not a uh, stickler about having absolutely smooth uh, decoupage paper. Some people are, and that's fine, uh, but I, it's okay if it has a few wrinkles, in it, and it really didn't have many because using that uh, baggie worked really well. So once that was all dry, I let it sit overnight, I believe, and I went back and just took some sandpaper and sanded off the excess on the edges. I did trim it down first, and then after it was dry, I sanded that off, so it had a nice edge. Some of it ripped here and there, it's okay. This is a rustic piece, um, all right with that. I'm also taking just a towel that I had kicking around there and a little bit of watered down antique wax and I'm just darkening up those edges just a slight slight bit to give it a little bit of um, some color on there so it's not just a bright white I want again want this to be warm and white I don't feel like is a warm color um, you know in these in these pictures so I wanted to kind of tone it down just a little bit so it didn't, it wasn't uh, drastic, but it was enough. So it made me happy. Now this greenery is from Hobby Lobby. I got it 50 or 40% off or something like that. It's just a 
like a droopy ivy type greenery and I'm pulling off some of the pieces of it and to see if I want to add greenery all the way around my picture. So what I would do is glue it un up underneath my picture, which I think it looks good, but I'm thinking that's gonna take a lot of greenery and that's gonna also add to the price of it. So I do think about that when I'm adding things to my booth. So I'm just trying it out to see how much I think it's gonna take and if I want to use that or not. And um, I decide ultimately not to use the whole piece of, or the whole amount of greenery for this basket decor. I cut off a couple pieces of the longer tendrils of the greenery and I put that down at the bottom, glue the ends a little bit, and then I cut the uh, flowers that I have. I've got some little bunches of flowers here, also from Hobby Lobby. They're gonna go well with the basket, well with the colors in the picture. So I'm just gonna add that for a pop of color in the greenery, and that's all I'm gonna do with that. So I will show you how I'm gonna add those in, and then you'll see the end pictures of this. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite and which one it is. Don't forget to check out the description for the scrapbook shop for the lacy papers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.